and welcome back to the Redwood Violin. This week's video has got a little bit long so I cut them in half and uh, this first one is about finishing the ribs in the top, gluing those together and I also carved the scroll. In the next one I'm going to be processing some sheep's gut to make a tail gut for the violin. Today I'm going to be fitting a base bar, that's this supporting strut that runs underneath the bridge foot, the base bridge foot, on the top of the violin. It's got three functions. The first is to support the top from the downward pressure of the strings. The second is to spread the vibrations of the bridge over the whole top, so that the whole top is moving up and down instead of just this little area in the middle. And the third one is a tone control and uh, the placement of the, of the bar, its mass and even its shape all have an effect on the tone. And I will explain how that works using this knife. So imagine that this knife represents this section of the top underneath the bridge. As the bridge vibrates from side to side, the top vibrates with it. If I increase the mass under the one foot of the bridge, I get a much slower but larger vibration. And I can get the same effect by moving the mass of the handle further away from the table. So by changing the location and the mass of the base bar, I can slow the vibrations in the top down and make them bigger. That's going to make a darker sounding instrument with more power, but it's going to be slower to respond to the bow because it's going to take more energy to get it moving. So the base bar is a separate piece of wood that has to fit exactly to the surface of the violin. I've made some pencil marks to locate it and now what I'm doing is making a chalk fit where I'll cut away the chalk and repeat the process until I get complete contact between the two bits of wood. There's a knack to this job. The first base bar I did in school took me about three days and now I can do it in a, one or two hours. I'm gluing in the base bar with a Sonoma grown hot glue. I'll let that sit for a couple of hours while I work on the rib structure. So that's the fun part, where I get to take the ribs off of the mould. Now I'm going to clean up the blocks. When I clean up the inside, I just work with the edge tools. I don't sand anything afterwards. I kind of I like the fresh look of the uh, tool marks on there. And gluing the top on with hot glue. Got to move fairly quickly for this job. So the glue for this is very dilute because uh, we want to be able to take the top off again quite easily. There it is, the top's on, the joint looks pretty nice and tight. And at this point you can really start to get a feel for how stiff the top is and this one is stiff. I've left extra wood in there because I don't know how the redwood is going to work and I'll probably be coming back in later and taking more wood out. I start by marking the outline of the scroll, the side profile, using a template. And for the volutes, or the spiral at the head of the scroll, that design's pierced in with a needle. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm going to scribe the line down the center all the way all the way around. And once I have that center line, I'm going to mark a series of circles around from the throat all the way around the outside to the chin, and that will give me my front profile. And I'll join the outside of those circles together. Give me a line to work to. I use my broad, flat arching gouge to start with. Uh, it cleans up the sides of the peg box and uh, I can remove a lot of material quickly while the work's still rough. Then later when I get into the tight spiral I'll start using smaller gouges. Cleaning up the front profile. So these curves are caused by the intersection of a flat plane with a curved surface and you get these complex lines that uh, look different from every angle you, you look at. There's a pencil guideline there but that's really just for rough sawing. At this point I'm doing these lines by eye. So now I'm just refining the lines, trying to get this, this curve nice and I'm looking at um, where the undercutting comes up to the edge and I'm sort of relating those two together and relating this line with this line. So everything sort of comes together and then also um, making this come perpendicular to the, to the center line of the scroll. That one's a little closer now. Hollowing out the peg box. And carving the two flutes that run all the way around the outside of the scroll. There's the top joint of the ribs and the scroll already carved. Uh, I don't have the back of the violin at the moment, that's at the Marquetry Studio, and I should have more news on that next week. And meanwhile, you can move on to the next video and follow my adventures in making genuine gut string.